using the calibration panel in Lightroom. That's what we're talking about today on Nadine Flynn Photography. This is the raw image that I'll be using for this tutorial. I've reduced the exposure a bit and managed the highlights somewhat as well before I begin the actual tutorial. There's a panel in Lightroom that I don't often use and recently have discovered how much I really do like it, so I wanted to share that with you today. If we drop down to the bottom on the right hand side uh, to all the different panels here that we have in Lightroom in the develop module, we come to the calibration panel. This panel adjusts tones in the entire image. It's a global adjustment that you would be making. And the options are shadows, adjusting the tint in just the shadows, and then we can go to red, green, and blue as the primary colors that are being adjusted. Now in the shadows, of course, um, if we move the marker to the left, we get a very green cast. If we move it to the right, we get almost like a purplish cast. I'm not sure if you can really see that or not but it's there. If we look at the red primary uh, saturation slider, if we pull that down, we really lose all of those tones in the rocks especially, but it does adjust the water as well. So you want to really look at these sliders, look what it does to all of the colors. Now I've bumped the red all the way up and you can see that it really brings out the orange in the rocks and it really has given the water a boost as well. But I think that's a little bit too much for the rock, so we'll pull it down. Actually, we'll put it back to zero as we look at the other areas of the panel. For green, we can adjust the saturation there, pulling it down. And again, it pulls a lot of the color out of the rocks as well as the water. So this is telling us that even though those rocks look very warm and orange, they do have a lot of green in them. If we pull it up, again, we see a lot of the green. Pull this back to zero, and we'll go to the blue. Now, I would expect the water to get very blue as I pull this up to the right, and it does get blue, not as much as maybe we expected. And then saturation-wise, again, it pulls the saturation out of most of the photo. So you can tell that these color sliders in the calibration module, or panel, sorry, uh, really do affect all of the colors in the photograph. So let's uh, adjust these a little bit and see if we can punch up this photograph just a little bit before we actually do our final edit. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull the red up to about, um, let's try it at 15. And the green, the same, we'll try it at about, well, let's go to 20. And then the blue, again, let's go to 20. So if we look at our image now with the calibration uh, saturation moved, uh, we can see that it has made quite a difference in really making those colors pop. I think I'm going to push the blue up even a little more, but I'm going to watch those rocks and make sure that they don't become too orange. I want them to really jump off the page because the light in this uh, image that morning was gorgeous, and I really want to bring that feeling out in this, in this image. So there you can see uh, what <clears throat> the red, green, and blue sliders will do. Now let's take a look at shadows. Um, I'm really thinking I'll leave the shadows neutral, but let's just see what happens if we push them to the right in the red, to the left in the green. I'm not seeing a whole lot changing there, but I think I'll leave it at zero. There. Now it's time for us to go up into these upper panels and make our fine adjustments. 
So in an image like this, I would typically add a little bit of clarity, perhaps a little bit of contrast. The highlights I will bring down just a touch and um, the whites I'm gonna leave. Our histogram looks good, so I'm not worried about the darks and the lights much, but I do wanna bring out a little more texture and let's see what D Hayes will do. I think that looks really nice. It really helps to define the texture in the water. <clears throat> now let's go down to the color panel because in this area right here, there's a lot of red in this rock and I want to pull that out just a little bit and hopefully not uh, change any of the color in this area, but let's just see what happens with the red. I'll pull it down just a little bit. And I think that looks okay. The orange is probably where mainly that color is. And if I pull it down, it does change these rocks quite a bit, which I kind of want to keep that warmth there. I really like that much better. So let's uh, put these back to zero. And let's go up to the brush tool. And we are going to desaturate that rock just a little bit. So I'll pull it down 10 and just my brush and I'll just brush it on right over this really red area. And maybe a little bit here as well. And I think it could use a little more desaturation, so we'll bring it down a little more. And I'm gonna raise the exposure just a bit. I don't wanna take all of the red out because there is different colors in these rocks, but that just seemed like a little much to me. So we'll put the brush back. And uh, I'm not gonna do anything with the tone curve today. We've address the colors. I shot it at a 100 ISO. I'm not worried about any kind of noise, but I will sharpen a little bit. The default is at 40 and I'm going to push this up to 50 and then mask it by holding the option key down as I move the slider. And I think if we stop around 80, that should be good. It gives us a little bit of sharpening on the rocks, but leaves this water pretty much like it is. So that is pretty much how I would go about using the calibration panel in this to really help this image come to life. Let's look at these side by side and see how they look. You can see in the initial image, it's soft, it's pretty. Uh, I had a few blowouts there that I addressed, but look at the texture, look at the color, look at how beautiful uh, it has become with just addressing the colors in the calibration module. So if you haven't tried it before, I hope that you will. It's really a powerful tool and you want to be very careful on those global adjustments. And then of course you can fine tune it later with the color module if you wish. So I hope that uh, encourages you to give that module a try. I'm sorry, that panel in the develop module a try and uh, I'd love to see how your images respond. Thanks so much. This is the before and this is the after. Thank you for joining me today at Nadine Flynn Photography. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to my channel. I also appreciate all comments and likes.